My name is Maciej Savitsky and I'm Vice President of Sales and Marketing for North America. I was born in Poland back when communism separated us from West Europe. After I graduated, I started my career in sales management and managed different sales teams in Poland, East Europe, West Europe. And one year ago, I transitioned to my new position here in the United States. So let's talk a little bit about communism. When talking about communism, people first think about the political system, one political party, no freedom of speech, repressions to those thinking differently. However, it is also about economy, no private businesses, everything owned and managed by the government. But what is the main difference between a market economy like we have here and a communist economy? A market economy is driven by supply and demand, which offsets the prices. In practice, usually the supply is higher than demand, which drives costs and prices down. It is most of the time an economy of surplus. Now, the communists decided to supply less than demand, which meant uh, they did not have to worry about prices, quality and sales. Therefore, it became an economy of shortage. So, let's see how it worked in practice. In practice, the shelves were empty, the shelves were empty, and if any products were available to purchase, long lines queued up in front of the stores and people were really fighting to get the goods. The government-owned companies also suffered from the shortage of supply, and both suppliers and consumers had to learn how to live in such economy. The side effect of this, believe me, believe it or not, was sustainability. Let's have a look at two case studies now. What you see on the pictures was a soda vending machine. You could only get carbonated water or carbonated water with raspberry juice. Two choices, that's it. And the water used was tap water. After one consumer has finished drinking, the next consumer had to wash the glass before his or her turn. But what made the system reusable? It was the metal wire protecting the glass from being stolen. Remember, we were living in an economy of shortage. So this metal wire would be called today tracking and tracing. The glass always stayed in place with a machine. It was used over and over again. Therefore, the entire system did not generate any packaging waste or environment pollution as the glass was washed with tap water only. Let's just keep the lack of hygiene aspect of the system. Can you imagine that we had a home delivery system in place already in 1970s? Every family in a city had the opportunity to get the fresh meal delivered to their front door every morning. It was delivered by what we called milkmen, who walked and pushed carts with glass bottle milk from one apartment building to the next placing orders of milk in front of a door and picking up an empty bottles in return. No pollution by any gasoline, by any gasoline or diesel engine, and the only waste was an aluminum closure on the top of a bottle. And imagine how healthy it was. But how was that possible to get the fresh milk every morning? The chain of supply was short. Every city and town had its own cooperative dairy. All small farmers living in the countryside owned cows for this purpose. Cows were milked early morning and dairy trucks drove around the country, picking up the milk in reusable aluminum cans, replacing full cans with empty ones, <coughs> and bringing milk to the dairies before the noon. Milk was processed during the day and low-fat milk was available to deliver to consumers the morning after. <clears throat> the key to the system was the short supply chain, both between resources and processing plants, as well as between processing plants and consumers. But was the communist economy really sustainable? The shortage of materials forced everybody to use reusable packaging. Large number of farmers and diaries spread around the country allowed to shorten the supply chain. 
the consumers did not create any waste as in an economy of shortage, everything was valuable. Nothing could go to waste. Well, to be honest, nobody really cared about the environment, which was devastated by polluting factories at that time. The environment was the least concern in those days. In the market economy today, where the word sustainable drives the businesses, processors try to introduce sustainable solutions like water and air, air filters, green energy supply, or reuse or recycle the waste. However, long supply chains and surplus of everything drove the development of new products into disposable packaging, which creates an even bigger environmental pollution concern. <coughs> Sorry. However, the business may say, it is not us. It is the consumers who pollute the world. If I don't recycle and reuse and buy goods made for sustainable materials, their demand is creating a problem. So what do we do about it? We try to sort and recycle the waste with very low success. We try to use more environmental friendly materials for disposable packaging, just replacing one source of waste with another. What should we do then? We have to start reusing our resources as they are limited. That requires change from everybody, growers, processors, logistic companies and consumers. Remember that we in the business are also consuming resources. In fact, each point along the supply chain, all the way from producers of raw materials downstream to the final consumer are consuming resources. Being the supplier, you are also the consumer. First, consumers have to change their habits as they drive the demand. If they start demanding sustainable solutions, their business will follow. However, as said before, the business is also consuming. Once you start requiring your suppliers upstream to be sustainable, you will also change their businesses. Remember, even going upstream as well as downstream, the demand of one link in the supply chain will cause the change in the following links. And how can a supplier be, become more sustainable? You may believe it or not, but sustainability will make your business cheaper. Reusable packaging will drive your costs down. But this is a long-term investment and to make sure you return what you pay for, you might have to revise your business model from one-way supply to a circular supply. That requires many changes, but by the end of the day, they will make your business not only sustainable, but also more profitable. Some may think reusable packaging is more expensive. It is true if you look from an item price point of view. However, if you look at it from time perspective, it only brings savings to the organization. Manufacturers no longer have to purchase one-way containers for every customer order they produce. And this investment delivers lower packaging costs and lower carbon footprint. It also increases efficiencies in production, operations, and logistics. It creates a more sustainable and circular supply chain in your industry. In 1989, the idea of solidarity under Lech Wałęsa drove a change from a communist economy to a market economy in my country. And I believe that it is about the right time for all of us here in the United States and all around the world to drive a change from a market economy to a sustainable economy of goods and resources. Otherwise, we might end up in the economy of shortage, which I personally experienced and to which I don't want to go back again. And here in Scheller Albert, we can help make the change. Our contribution to make the world more sustainable is achieved by making one-way streams returnable. So the life of a package doesn't end up after one-way trip. At Scheller Albert, we design and deliver innovative circular supply chain solutions. 
Our turn to transform is now. With over eight years of being the European market leader and a global supplier in innovation and development in manufacturing returnable plastic packaging, having designed thousands of different types of reusable handheld containers, bulk bins and pallets, dedicated to many different markets and industries, following their specific demands and needs. Scheller Alibert can support its customers with more than just a packaging. Based on proven logistics and cost saving analysis, Scheller Alibert designs new products which in intelligent and responsible ways save our customers money and contribute to saving our global environment. We help to manage the fleets and provide financial solutions reducing the initial investment. Finally, yet importantly, we also purchase back and recycle these products after its lifetime, turning them into new cost saving and sustainable solutions, thus helping to contribute the circular supply chain. This is why we say at Solar Alibert, we are making plastic packaging too good to waste. Thank you for listening to our presentations and we look forward to talking with you.